The forest is an hypnotizing, mysterious, but inviting place. Do you agree with it, dear friends? By the way, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you here again. Can you believe that this is the same place of my last video? We can clearly understand how a different weather can extremely change a place. It looks like another forest to me. <laughs> I'm here today to explore another part of this beautiful, steep, harsh valley full of fallen coniferous trees and unstable terrains. I'm actually walking on a landslide that brought an entire portion of this coniferous forest directly downstream. Due to its features, this valley is always quiet and the landscape is amazing. Small caves, lots of pine trees, crevasses everywhere and crystal clear waters make this place unique. Rarely attended because it's very difficult to walk through. I think only hunters and lumberjacks are coming to this place. And me, of course. By the way, as a survivalist, I always look for natural resources that will help me out accomplishing my main tasks, such as fire. And this area is full of fomens, fomentarius, commonly known as a tinder fungus. Even the 5,000 years old Otzi the Iceman carried some pieces of it as a tinder material. It ignites easily if it's dry and it burns slowly, allowing you to carry ember for long distances if it's needed. What a beautiful primitive location! Do you like it? Let me know in the comment. Oops, sorry. Unfortunately, I had to stop walking towards this direction. It actually led me to a cliff. Oh well, I love the exploration for that too. I will bring my climbing gear next time. As you can see, water is not the main concern here in this season. I think find a flat piece of terrain that is safe from widow makers will be my main priority. Gear is something that makes our life easier, and the Grail has been a very important game changer in my explorations. Hey, I didn't get paid for saying that. And I will always support brands that produce real gear that they can rely on. I want to be clear on that. It's good to have a tool like this for our community, but it doesn't mean that we can avoid to learn and master how to filter and boil wild water to make it safe. The time where this knowledge will be crucial might come and we need to be ready. It's time to find a safe place to rest a little. I luckily found a tiny patch of terrain that is not steep. It's time to let the fire going, eat some food and drink a cup of coffee. Do you know why I love these moments? These are moments where I can gather my thoughts and think about what I saw during the day, where I've been, how to overcome that huge falling trees that I found while I was exploring a stream that is running along a beautiful gorge in order to keep exploring that area for instance. It's for me a kind of meditation. By the way, the fire was an important step in our culture. It allowed us to cook food and get warmth and protection. Making fire also allowed activity into the dark and gave some protection for, from predators and insects. But hey, that's something we all know. The interesting part is that the fire was on this earth way before human existence. And despite the classical scientific view explained that plants and animal distribution can be explained solely by climate and soil, 
there are new researches that confirm that fire is a widespread process in the earth system and plays a key role in ecosystem composition and distribution. I think that the world cannot be understood without considering fire, because fire has a strong ecological and evolutionary consequences for biota, including humans. The origin of fire is tied to the origin of plants, which are responsible for two of the three elements essential to the existence of fire, oxygen and fuel. The third element, aid source, has probably been available throughout the history of the planet, mainly through lightning, but less predictably from volcanoes and sparks from rock falls or meteorites impacts. Before the appearance of photosynthetic organisms, the atmosphere lacked sufficient oxygen, and before the appearance of terrestrial plants, it lacked fuels. Thus, fire did not exist on our planet. By the beginning of the Paleozoic era, 540 million years ago, the oxygenated atmosphere was sufficient to support fire, but the lack of terrestrial plants fuels limited the possibility of it. There's a clear evidence of charcoal in the Devonian deposit 100 million years later, although extensive charcoal deposits do not appear until the late Paleozoic era. Wildfires have shaped our world since long before humans emerged. We cannot understand our biota in terms of adaption and ecosystem distributions without including fires as a process in the natural history of our planet. Fire has been integral to the evolution of flora and fauna on this earth, and we have adapted fire for our own use. Sorry guys, I love reading bioscience articles, and I was lately reading one about the pre-human era and the early evidence of fire. I actually found it very interesting. I will leave a link in the description so you can freely download the complete article, just you want to go deeper. With all that said, fire is not just one of the five C's of survivability to me. It's a power that I have to respectfully use once it's needed, being sure to not harm Mother Nature. I'm truly sure you agree with me, dear friends. I love learning new things about our world, and the exploration to me is a learning process. It's a perfect equation in our lives. Exploration equals curiosity plus effort, divided by the time spent, makes knowledge and memories. That's what I think. Do you agree with me, dear friends? Please let me know in the comments. I'm literally working on a video about the difference between the survival mentality and the survival kid mentality that you guys voted on my latest poll on Instagram. Stay tuned. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe. Thank you for your support. See you soon.